406 Tech Talk. We have a lot of exciting topics for you today. It's February 21st, which is kind of telling of digital assessment in the 21st century, and that's what today's oh, show is all about. Good point. I know. Good it's point. about assessment and how technology enhances that. So, And you might notice we have a special addition to our new couch this week. <laughs> this is Charles Harvey. Yay! Meet the newest member of our technology integration specialist team. I'm Charles Harvey. I am the newest technology integration specialist in the district. You have some background and experience in using Promethean products, so the active boards and the active software, uh, active inspire. I just have a, a passion for technology and uh, how it can be seamlessly integrated and used in the classroom to uh, enhance learning. That's always the goal and we can often make it uh, a little better, a little easier, a little funner with with technology. I've been interested uh, from an early age. Um, a lot of opportunities were given to me to kind of to play around and to use technology um, both as a student and as a teacher. I was given a lot of opportunities to be trained and train others and so I think it's just developed over time. Um, just those skills and those practices um, have made plenty of mistakes um, and stumbled plenty of times with technology so I think I, I bring that, uh, that empathy and that patience to the process. Um, Again, the goal has to be the, the learning. Um, if the technology gets in the way of that objective, then it's probably not appropriate. If you have to spend more time um, troubleshooting and working with and maybe explaining the tool, that the learning gets lost, then it's probably not an effective use of technology. So I think you always have to keep that end goal in mind. Um, if you can get there without technology um, or with technology, that's, that's kind of what you, you need to decide. Is this going to be enhanced? Um, or made better or easier or faster or more engaging because of technology. I think, I think what I'm looking forward to most is, is helping uh, others kind of overcome those stumbling blocks that might be holding them back. I think there's a lot of potential just waiting to be sort of unleashed and opened on, on uh, the learners in the district and the teachers in the district. So just helping those little bumps, um, those little hurdles that we, we all have to get over at some point um, or that we all have and, and continue to have to sort of navigate. I think that's going to be important to, to getting technology to be more ubiquitous within the district. Big news, big excitement, and big words too. Just fill out a help desk ticket and he'll be on his way. So Charles, welcome. Thank you. Yes, Thanks. we're very happy to have you. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So can you give us a little history? Like how did you come to this position? Sure, yeah. So I taught science for 10 years at Lockwood. It was, it was my starting place in education. Um, this year, an opportunity came to my attention that there was a tech integration job and I knew I would regret it if I didn't at least try so I, I put an application and and here I am so um, and we're so excited to have you yeah we've thanks. been learning from Charles for a long time through tech, tech cadre and through tech summit and watching him do Promethean trainings throughout the district. So he's actually been a key component of technology already mm -hmm. in our district, but now we get you full time. It's, it's, fun, to jump in, yeah, it's fun to jump into this you know, yeah. full time and, and dedicate my, focus my attention um, specifically Solely on to technology. Yeah. And you already even have some, some help tickets that have come your way, I right? I do, it's been, I, I kind of did a little overlap before I transitioned out of my teaching job. I was, I was already in the email list and getting some, trying to help as much as I could, so. Um, been on that list and um, kind of bracing for the for the waves that will be coming and are coming in but it's exciting I, I want to yeah. get out and and help out so it's very exciting yeah. I know one of the things that we we always try to emphasize on the show is the help desk yeah. because a lot of people don't know that that's the best way t for people to get a hold of us yeah. and have us come into yeah, their room. I've been, I've been impressed with that process just that it's formalized and and you know it does keep that record mm -hmm. so it, it can keep track of what's going on and can help prioritize and, and distribute all those things that need that and need to be done. And it's a great database. Is one yeah. thing that I didn't really realize from the outside is then if the same problem arises, we can go back into the help desk ticket and look. Oh, right. Ann did this, mm -hmm. or Terry did this, and then what works move and doesn't forward. work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Troubleshooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So send help desk tickets to Charles. He's yeah. happy to come in. With it. <laughs> um, so this week we're talking about assessments, and this is a big topic. And um, we sat down with our assessment coordinator, Roger Weber Derzinski, and we found out just what a, a sizable topic it is. Busy man is Roger Derzinski. K-12 Assessment Coordinator for Billings Public School. Roger recently sat down with us to not only explain his job, but to explain his take on assessment. Most of my job is coordinating assessments for the school district. Um, 
at various levels, and then also the, the other end of that is to uh, manage the data and student achievement data that goes along with it, and then work with the curriculum department to um, inform our practice. Whether it's a teacher's phone scanning clickers, a fraction review through Google Forms, or a math assessment done with Kahoot, Roger sees digital tools having an effect on the way we do assessment. Um, we have quite a, a, a wide range of digital tools available for assessment, um, especially informative assessment practices. Um, things that come along with the, the goal with our curriculum, so they might be provided through the curriculum we have adopted, or um, not embedded things like Vimeo votes or Clicker. Just using other resource advantages of of digital tools we, in, in the world of assessment is that we can they make our jobs a lot more efficient. So collecting information, uh, scoring assessments. They, they allow us to do things that we couldn't do in the past just by paper and pencil. Um, and, and that's not to say that we, we can't, we're getting rid of paper and pencil assessments or um, things like that because I think they, they provide different purposes and they give us different information. So um, I think they, they complement each other well and they give us uh, more resources to better um, assess our students and to, get, to gather information and, and improve our practices as teachers. There's little doubt that technology plays a huge role in how our students learn, but how is it affecting what our students learn? What we're seeing in the content standards now is, is students need to be more proficient with technology. As they prepare for college and career, we know that those, those skills are important and are needed in the workforce. So looking at some of the summative and interim assessments we're going to uh, switch over to as we transition to the smarter balance assessments. There's practice tests and, and training tests available now uh, that students and teachers can access and use in their classroom. As we're preparing our students and our teachers for this transition we're in, uh, I think it's important to keep in mind that we aren't doing the same things we've, we've done in the past. And I think our practices are going to change a little bit and the way we assess our students are going to change a little bit. And I think um, the more you're familiar with, with those changes and you can adjust your instruction to meet some of those changes, but really it's it's all being guided by those those common standards we have adopted. And Clearly, digital assessment tools have a place in today's education. In preparing for the Smarter Balance Assessment, not only will teachers be helping students to prepare for their futures in college and career, but the formative assessments we use in the meantime will help guide us to become better teachers. So there's two type main type of assessments that we do as teachers, right, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. The formative and the summative. And one thing I've realized as a parent going into parent-teacher conferences is nobody explains to the parents what it is. Mm -hmm. right. So I would love for you to pretend I'm a parent with no educational background and explain to me the difference between formative and summative and how it's useful. Sure. Um, I'll take formative. Sure. Formative assessments I used a lot in my class. Formative being <laughs> with the root word form in there oh. help you to form what you're teaching. Okay. So you might it might be just a really informal little um, check for understanding type. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And it, it helps you to form the way that you're going to proceed with the next mm. step. Whether the kids need a, a redo on a lesson or whether they it's time to move on, but it helps you to really just form the way that you're going to do your instruction. And so. Um, one of the things that I did a lot in my class was a weekly assessment for our new reading program last year that I didn't put it in the grade book, I didn't, I didn't use it as any right. kind oh, of a okay. um, marker for them, mm -hmm. against them or for them, but it really helped to guide my instruction on do my students understand this concept, do they not have it yet, and then maybe I need to go back and spend more time on a certain concept or cool. carry it into the next So week. what's your favorite technology tools for the formative assessments? Wow, that's a really tough question. Yeah, in, in my classroom I was fortunate to have response devices, so okay. those were a quick way to grab right. um, to grab some right. information or some data. Right, yep. um, and I know in our fly. district we have a lot of student response systems. Mm -hmm. We've got the Mimeos, we've got is it called Active Inspire? Yeah, there What's are, this student response system? There are Active Votes and active then Active votes. Expression and Expression 2. So there's okay. the three in this series of, of response devices with Prometheus. But there's some other ones that we'll talk about a little later on that okay. we have found recently. Yeah. Um, I used Google Forms a lot, actually, because it's a, it's a way to um, push out a survey to people. You can send it to email or mm -hmm. you can put it out and publish it on the web. But mm -hmm. I actually created some assessments using a Google form. Right. And when the students would respond or submit their answers, it would come to me in a spreadsheet. And I was able to look, you know, down the column Quickly. or across the row and find out 
based on how the kids answered those questions, whether they understood it or not. Yeah. So that was a quick those, and easy. Those thing. spreadsheets are handy, so because you, you can sort them uh, based on what's in that column of, mm -hmm. of sort of seeing where those gaps are, and if you have, you know, the majority of your students where you want them to be. Yep. So that's that's really handy that it, it populates that spreadsheet right away. Yeah, so. and it's it's cool to see it all come in. And the other yeah. the other nerdy part of it that I love is if you have a little bit of extra. Um, a little bit of extra background, you can set some rules on there in that conditional formatting Love to, it. you know, turn it red if it yeah. doesn't say a certain thing that you want it to say. So it's or between a certain range of scores or values, yeah. you know, change it to green or it's yellow. It's great so because it, then you can like e visually see, oh, right. that kid doesn't understand these four concepts. And right. It's a super tool. You're looking for a way to assess your students using a tool you already have right at your fingertips? Try Google Forms. Lewis and Clark's sixth grade teacher, Angel Zikifus, is using this tool as an innovative way to collect and assess not only what her students are learning, but also what she is teaching. Google Forms are a quick and easy way to collect information, and since questions may be formatted in multiple choice, short answer, or even rated responses, they lend themselves perfectly to student assessment. Using a small collection of classroom Chromebooks, Angel creates Google Forms for both summative and formative assessment. Well, basically, all we do is say, here you go, send it over to you, bye-bye. On this particular day, Angel's students were completing a fraction review. When her students submit their completed forms, the data comes to Angel in a spreadsheet, which she can instantly analyze. This has proven to be quite a time saver, and in more ways than one. I like the immediate feedback. I like that I know how they did um, quickly, and that I am able to, I don't have to sit in grade papers for an hour. Uh, it's easier for her to just look on my computer instead of grading a bunch of papers. It takes less time. Well, it's neater handwriting and then I don't lose it. Well, I think it's easier yes. than writing everything out. While there seems to be quite a consensus that using Google Forms for assessment just makes things easier, Angel has found a lot of value in using this type of digital assessment. So we use it formative with our do the math. We use it formative with our um, sixth grade common assessment. I also use it as a summative, so I use it always. When Angel compares using Google Forms to some of the other methods of digital assessment, she sees it as a great alternative. I think it's excellent. We've tried Socrative, and there's just a lot of glitches with it. So I think Google Forms is actually a, a more reliable way to, to do it. Students point out one more benefit of using Google Forms. You could do it at home on your computer and stuff if you have to. And when it comes to sharing and collaboration, Google Forms can hardly be beat. And we can share it within all of us, all of the sixth grade teachers, and we share it with Mr. Pomeroy. Yeah. So he gets all of the data instantly as well. So if you want some help putting Google Forms to work in your classroom, well, just call Angel. Okay, just kidding. She may be a real go-getter, but we'll leave her to doing what she does best, teaching sixth grade. Instead, just fill out a help desk ticket and a technology integration specialist will set up a time to help you get started. I love it. Mm -hmm. And so then summative, how would you explain that um, to someone who's not familiar with educational language? I, I think building on the root part, the, the summary or the sum of, of what they've learned. So these are the, the things that we probably typically think of with assessments, ah. the, the tests, the chapter mm -hmm. test, the unit test, okay. um, where we're taking a, a measurement and, and probably recording it mm -hmm. as part of a score um, mm -hmm. that would go in a grade book. So it's that summary. And, and again, you can build from that for your further formative right. assessment. So you see um, maybe some concepts that need to be revisited. But hopefully, through the process of formative assessment, you've you've uh, helped navigate those, yes. those gaps and those discrepancies. That back when we were in school, it was you learned a unit, you took a test. Yep. You learned a unit, you took a test. And, and that's changed. Thank I think, goodness. Yeah, I think that we use assessment now to really shape the way that we teach and, yeah. and the, the way that we can best meet the needs of our students wherever they are. And, right. and it's multiple measures over time. And so right. they need to be a variety of measures. There's you know, sort of the saying or the joke that you, you can't fatten the cattle if they're always on the scale. <laughs> and so it's tough to balance you know, the teaching time with the right. assessment. You, you can't be assessing all the time, right. but you can use those formative steps mm -hmm. to really s tailor the, the now instruction. Now what was the quote about the cows again? You, you can't fatten the cattle if they're always on the scale. So oh, if they're always I being measured, it. 
you can't feed you can't them. Feed you can't them. feed them the knowledge. Oh, that's so an awesome analogy. If they're analogy. always on the scale, then yeah. you can't fatten them up. Which begs Very the question, cool. can you feed them on the scale? Well, you're Ooh. not going to get an accurate measure then. That's so true. You have to have those times. I love it. It's not just fatten the cattle, weigh them, fatten the cattle, weigh them. Right. Right. There's so many different ways now that we can be, the kids don't necessarily know they're being measured. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, in some of the bigger tests they do, like the Smarter Balance that Roger talked about, um, you know, NWEAs, that kind of thing. But right. a lot of the things that we're doing now are so engaging and so fun for the kids that they Almost don't... Almost gamified, really. And they need to be because I think yeah. there's some assessment fatigue where students are being assessed a lot and they don't yeah. know which ones to feel you know, anxious about, yeah. like there's a, an appropriate level of, you know, I need to do well on this. And mm -hmm. then if we hit them too much with assessments, it just becomes, oh, another, another test. Right. And so I think that's important that we can Good. blend those in and weave them in um, yeah. carefully and, and, and in a, you know, funner way mm -hmm. um, so that they don't realize we're, we're checking for understanding. Yeah. So. And, and to your point, Roger um, brought up a good point. He said that, you know, the more of these kind of more informal little assessments that we can do, it gives them practice mm -hmm. for the format of those bigger tests right. and, and maybe ease some of that testing anxiety, but mm -hmm. also to help to help blend that process. Yeah. Navigating the test should never be the test. Exactly. Right. It should, be the, should be the information. Yep. So. Exactly. So what are yeah. the, the assessment tools that you guys have seen in use out and about? There's been so many cool ones. I think one of the neatest new ones I've seen are Plickers and Kahoot. And I learned about Plickers from Jennifer Brackney at Castle Rock, mm -hmm. who learned about them from her dad at Skyview. Yeah. And, and her dad is? Uh, Tony, Tony Real. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that was really cool, that sharing of information and to see the kids so excited with Plickers. Mm -hmm. If you have an Android or iOS enabled smartphone or device, some paper and a printer, and a desire to know what your students understand through formative assessment, then you're ready for Flickers. The best part about the app, it's free. Browsing to the Plickers.com website and creating a free account allows you to create multiple classes where you can assign your students each to a Plicker card. Where do you get the Plicker cards, you might ask? Well, it's quite simple. Under the Details menu of the website, you have the option of downloading a PDF to get your cards. This PDF can be printed, copied, cut, laminated, whatever you need to do to get them in the hands of your students. If a card gets lost, ripped, or otherwise destroyed, fear not, another plicker is just a printer away. The PDF document has two plicker symbols per card. You can cut these to make two cards per sheet. A small number on each side of the shape indicates which card that is. The students indicate their response by facing the letter of their answer choice in the upright position, A, B, C, or D. With their plickers in hand and answers ready to share, Mrs. Brackney's students show her their cards indicating their answer choice. She simply scans the room with her camera and the plicker app and collects their responses. She can view these on her phone and on the website later. Um, what other kinds of uh, assessment tools have you used? Uh, I've used Socrative, um, which is a, a website-based assessment. Um, they've added some features in the recent past with being able to add images. That was a, 
a user request and, and they listened and so you can add images and um, I've given tests other ways and given the same test using Socrative and student engagement is higher. Mm -hmm. um, they like the way the questions slide off the screen and they can choose those things, uh, multiple choice or respond. There's a lot of the um, online social learning environments that have built-in assessments like um, Edmodo, uh, Schoology, so those mm -hmm. are, are great too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What about, what were some of the things that you and your high school background, what did you use? Well, a lot of the bring your own device systems like Socrative was a big one just because every high school student seemed to have a cell phone mm -hmm. and the same is happening at Castle Rock across the board because those kids can bring their own device and the, mm -hmm. the teachers and students are really embracing that. Um, one of the things we talked about when we were sitting down to discuss assessment was the exam view mm -hmm. and could you I, I, I can. So exam view is a, is a software suite um, by the company e-instruction and uh, a lot of times you may not realize that you, you have a copy. I, I stumbled upon uh, a copy earlier in, in my teaching career and, and tried it out. And it's just a great um, assessment authoring um, software where you can write tests. And then uh, what is nice is the output can be paper, just the mm -hmm. traditional paper test. Um, you can export it as, as HTML, so make it into a website that then um, checks the questions it can check and sends you an email of the scores and you can read through what's been typed for an open-ended question or an essay question. Um, and then um, more recently I discovered you could um, format it to, to work with those devices. And so the questions you author in this one area, this one place, can be plugged into a variety of things. So mm -hmm. um, you, know, you might dig around through your boxes of disks and curriculum uh, to see if you have a copy. So there might be some floating around. And it's just a nice um, assessment suite of, of tools. Yeah. I think there's a lot of tools like that that we, we have right at our fingertips that we don't necessarily even right. know about within the curriculum itself. Yep. Um, a couple that I'm thinking of from the elementary perspective, our math book, the Pearson Success Net, has its own mm -hmm. suite of, of um, assessment tools yeah. right there in it where you can print them out, you can make your own tests, or right. the kids can take them on online. Yeah. Another one, uh, the Lead 21 mm -hmm. series um, has tons of assessments in there and you can do them paper and pencil there they do give the assessment books but it's it's a long process to sit down and hand grade mm -hmm. a test and well, I know and for kindergartners that's mm -hmm. a difficult thing to take an assessment paper and pencil yeah. when and they're just learning yeah. their they letter look a little formation. different from grade to grade you Good. know as you get into the upper grades that the kids are, are more Writing easily able to mm -hmm. but some of the the um, younger grades even the second grade I was doing with a class yesterday and it will actually it has audio that oh, goes cool. with it so the kids oh. click on the word that has the sound that's being read to them nice. so the, you know getting that digitally mm -hmm. each kid is getting an assessment that they can hear how individualized where before that would require a teacher going to right. all 25 yep. kids yep. I think that's awesome it's a lot and about um, kind of right and wrong answers but I think technology really lends itself to amazing project-based learning assessments mm -hmm. which I think is extremely powerful and and one thing we've all used you know where your kids are creating videos or they're doing mm -hmm. something else so right. I think technology has enhanced that leaps and bounds where it used to be a poster yep. or a drawing yeah. <laughs> or a yes. skit and now it's like whoa all, all the these creations levels, yep. levels to of reflect yeah. on the learning which I think is is important yep. and powerful. Okay, so our, our we found a really cool app. How did you find which the app? Oh, <laughs> oh, honestly, <Yeah>. Pinterest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, digital yeah. is awesome. So, can you explain Kahoot? Sure. So, Kahoot is is kind of like Socrative and the game with the colors that when we were little. Simon. Yeah, Simon. Uh, all into one. Thirty plus forty. <laughs> Boom! It's been cahooted! All right, look at that! Every single... Well, we had one person do 50. That's all right. Great job. Next question. Oh, Mackenzie is in the lead! Woohoo! All right, and... Whoa! 60 plus 20 plus 5? You guys can't do this in your head. No way! No way can you do that in your head! What do you mean, yes, you can? Oh, boy. 
Oh, the correct answer is 85. Oh! <laughs> the group that I worked with the other day said it was very game showy. Yeah. So, so kind of that way where you can deliver an assessment or a quiz. It can be you know fun or serious. Um, just a whole variety of them out there. And you use your own device as the Any response. Device. Yeah, computer, right. a device. phone, an yep. iPad. And then as the instructor or the, or the you know, the game show host, um, you, you send, out send it questions. out. Yeah, and so they respond and there's points and rankings and, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of a, a fun time. It even has intense music. Yeah. It does. And the thing I like about it is you can, there, you know, you can make your own. Right. So you can do a, a social studies review or a math quiz or something like that. Formative, summative, whatever you want. It does collect the data. That's yeah, a lot At of first when I played, I was like, well, this is fun, but what's the application? And it does create a spreadsheet, yeah. right. like so many of our other tools, and tells you which yep. answers are correct or incorrect. But the other thing you can use it for is a survey. So you don't right. necessarily have to do it as there's a correct answer. Ah. You could you could gather it to glean information about you know what your students might want in right. a, a discussion starter exactly. or exactly. Yeah. But there's always there's always fun tools out there, and yeah. as we come across them, we'll be sure and share them. But or if you find them, share them with us. Yes. I loved when we, when we get these emails from teachers. I'm like, oh my gosh! And I learned about clickers from. Jennifer Brackney, I would have never known, so I really appreciate those people sharing. Yes, we all well. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of people sharing, we have a big thing coming mm -hmm. up that we would really like to get um, out there and get your help on. And you may get prizes. You will get prizes. <laughs>